enjoy. Come celebrate the arts. It's Pam time.
Hey everybody, it's Pam Murphy, and hopefully you'll like country. Not only country, but the country, as in Cooperstown, New York. I'm going to have a little tour of going up there, so I hope you enjoy it. Now you think of the birthplace of baseball, the National Baseball Hall of Fame, so we're going to get to see that. But not only that up there, there's all kinds of wonderful things. I'm going up to see my mom and dad, Wild Bill and Kathy, up at the Barracks Tree Farm. So let's give a shout out to everybody up there, my relatives up in Cooperstown. But I'm also going to be seeing some of the other great things that they have to offer there in Cooperstown. The Fenimore House, the National Farmers Mu Museum, so we're going to get to see those. Some great things when you, if you have a chance to go up to see Cooperstown, but also the beautiful, beautiful lake at Seagull Lake when you're up there. So we're also going to get a chance to see the Glimmerglass Opera House, and that's what I'm most excited about. So I'm bringing my camera along. Enjoy! Get a glimpse of Cooperstown, New York. It's Pam time. All right, so we're at Double Day Parking Field. They're in front of the Cooperstown Chamber of Commerce information on the day of Hall of Fame. Jessica Murray. Hi. All right, we're gonna head over to the field real quick. We're actually at the Double Day Field right now, parking lot. up a little bit so I can get a good shot. So um, grandpa used to live over there. Uh, I think it was the greenhouse and when he was a little kid he was one of the original bat boys and um, he used to go get all the balls that were hit out there. They used to sit on the roof and watch the games. Here's the, the Hall of Fame. Actually, this is Double Day Field. Here's the dugout. Here, uh, uh, hundred bucks to everybody and welcome to Cooperstown. We're standing in front of the Haida Totem Pole in front of the Fenimar Art Museum and it's absolutely beautiful, beautiful. open daily from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. So while you're down here visiting and going to the National Baseball Hall of Fame, you can also come here.
And right next door, you can see some of the people anxiously waiting for the Hall of Famers who come and play golf on the golf course on Otsego Lake, which is right next to the Farmer's Museum down there. I don't know if you can see it. So you can go visit that. That's all right next to each other. We're at the Fenimore Art Museum. And right now we're looking at the Farmer's Museum. Beautiful. Get a chance to get a little bit of piece of history up here as well. While you're out getting some baseball history and getting some autographs. And this Council Rock, hopefully we can see this. It's a famous meeting place of the Indians. Of course, this is the place that inspired James Fenimore Cooper to write his book. Deerslayer. There's Clinton's Dam. Here's the steps that go down. And then if you look way out there, you'll see Kingfisher Tower, which was commissioned during the Depression era. Let's see if I can get it. I don't know if I can give jobs to people up here who are hungry and starving. There we go, it's out there. Hey everybody, it's Pam Murphy and I'm on the tip of Otsego Lake. Up there is Kingfisher Tower. You can see off in the distance. And then I'm going to have you look over here to Council Rock, which is where the Indians used to come and meet. Over here, I'll show you where that is. There's an actual plaque on the rock. There we go. My name is Charlie Newell. I'll be the director of the production of Carousel. When I met with Francesca Zambello and we were starting to talk about what projects might um, I do here at the Thermoglass Festival, she immediately mentioned Carousel and of course it's a piece that is so close to my heart. I've uh, produced a piece uh, and directed the piece uh, twice before, but the opportunity now in this most intimate of opera performance spaces with uh, the extraordinary uh, size and scale of the orchestra that will be accompanying the piece, I feel so lucky and so fortunate to get to bring uh, that history of the opera and yet rediscover it again in a unique way that is only possible here at the Glimmer Glass. I'm John Colbert and I'll be designing scenery for Carousel. It's really a privilege to be able to continue work on a production that you've worked on before. We've done it twice before, both times in intimate thrust theaters and now to a proscenium theater. So there's a big transition there, which is exciting. Our approach to Carousel from the beginning has been find and create the really hard, gritty, New England uh, life that all these people inhabit. The real focus is on the people and the characters, which is what you can do in an intimate uh, production of Carousel. The music and the relationships in the show explore the power of love and also the pain of love. And I think that's a universal theme that will be timeless forever. It doesn't matter when it's set or what the context of this particular piece is. What matters is that universal feeling that we all have and, and how this um, expresses that. My name is Danny Pelzer. I am the choreographer for Carousel. Dance in opera and theater serves a lot of purposes. It's always best when they are used to propel the story forward 
but movement also gives us an enormous amount of information about character. Charlie Newell, who is the director, has, has a fantastic vision for it, which is to make it sort of as gritty and realistic as possible. It's not colorful, it's not hyper-romantic, it's the hard grueling life of real coastal Maine people. Uh, so the vocabulary, the choreographic vocabulary, will try to reinforce the sort of the weight and the grit and, and the hard life that these people have to, to make a living. I just want to talk about his orchestration. A lot of musicals are not orchestrated, most musicals, by the composer, unlike opera composing, and you need orchestrators orchestrating his music. Um, Oklahoma was, was orchestrated by Ron Russell Bennett, one of the great, great geniuses of the American musical theater. Um, and he orchestrated the first two songs of Carousel. He orchestrated the Carousel Waltz, and he orchestrated uh, Mr. Snow. And then he got really busy with his advertising business and couldn't keep up with the show. And it's crazy to think that in our industry, even a genius at the top of his form sometimes needs a day job, and this, this guy did. So Don Walker took over, who's, who's equally genius. And Richard Rodgers' instruction to Don Walker and his team was, Carousel is not Okay, so behind here is where the dressing rooms are and the warming up area. You can hear the people getting ready. What do you mean by that? and you can sit inside for free and watch them change everything on the stage. Oh wow, for that's the nice. evening's performance. So this is the backside of Glimmerglass Opera House. You got your stage crew out here before the show, having fun playing frisbee. Chilling in their black garb, getting ready to go. <laughs> She's the one who's working hard. <laughs> That's probably one of your actors right there coming in. Where are we? Oh, we are at the Glimmerglass Opera. We're going to see the musical Carousel, which is something new they've started. They're including a musical every summer along with the traditional operas. They're all done in repertoire. You can come up for the weekend and see all four operas from That's July nice. to August. Nice. <laughs> so we're up, up, we're the, what is our seats? We're upper we're level. Upper level, left balcony. Nice. And the side walls are open. This is beautiful. Hello everybody, again, 
it's Pam Murphy and you've been watching Pam Time. I hope you've enjoyed everything that you've seen tonight. So come back and see us again next week. We're going to be bringing to you some other great things that are in your local community. So tap into the performing arts in your area. This is Pam Murphy. Goodbye and good night.